Everyone agrees that 9-11 has been the major turning point of our era. And the major conflicts are really about what 9-11 was. We have obviously huge disagreements here. The 9-11 movement with which most of the people here will probably be associated in some way or another, truth movement, has focused on the gaping holes in the official conspiracy theory, and there are indeed many. On the other hand, you have those who are normally critical of the established official stories, like Noam Chomsky, Albert of Zenet, and so forth, who say that, well, 9-11 is something, it's a one-off event, and we should really pay attention to the larger institutional context of uh, class, uh, uh, class society in the United States. And in short, had an institutional analysis instead of focusing on this one event. These people have been called uh, gatekeepers, left gatekeepers, who also basically are blocking out uh, the same things that the official mainstream media and uh, governments are blocking out, which is what is 9-11, what in fact went on in 9-11. I'm going to be considering what I think we all will find our bearings in and will answer the, uh, the questions of the left gatekeepers. Let's look at the undeniable unifying framework in which the whole entire 9-11 event and its aftermath and its foremath has occurred across the entire historical event. And I'm going to have two criteria, principles of, of concern here. And one is that I say an undeniable unifying framework. And I mean uh, undeniable in the sense that it's scientifically confirmable. We have evidence for it, and we don't have good evidence against it. And in that case, uh, we say it's confirmed, and therefore it is a scientific hypothesis that for the, for the moment we can regard as valid, but always leaving it open to disconfirmation. That's what I mean by a scientific approach to the matter. And what I mean by a unifying framework is that all the facts that we have on 9-11, whether we, uh, whatever side or belief that we might have, that all the facts fit into this overall unifying framework. And by finding this unifying framework, I'm in a way doing the work of a philosopher, but also an undeniable unifying framework, providing the bearings that I think has really been lacking on this whole uh, on this whole matter, which is, is uh, uh, we all agree, uh, a turning point of modern history, if not of uh, the major uh, turning point of not only our lives, but of Western civilization. So the first thing I want to uh, clarify on this, uh, on this undeniable unifying framework is that the official theory of 9-11 is itself a conspiracy theory. Now, this took me a long while to really uh, figure out or uh, come to conceptualize because there's just so much dinning into our heads of a pre-habituated framework of understanding that even the firemen who were present at the events who never talked about uh, uh, a collapse of the buildings before but talked about explosions and so forth, uh, they too start using the official language. Well, the official language has led us all to think we're the conspiracy theorists insofar as we don't accept the story, uh, but what we have forgotten is the fundamental fact that pre precedes that, which is the official conspiracy theory is itself a conspiracy theory, and really the, the least plausible of the conspiracy theories. Um, but it's worked very, very well. I think for years it worked well and it's still being constantly reproduced as really in the way that a fanatic religion does. It has magic s syllables that it keeps repeating over and over again and incantations and that incantation, whenever anyone raises a question, is simply, oh, conspiracy theory. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. And I think that this has actually succeeded in driving most people off from even uh, engaging with the facts of 9-11 because they don't want to be called a conspiracy theorist because that's to be a fool and to be mocked. And I think the best way of dealing with this first fact about the undeniable unifying framework is just to say, uh, well, um, on, the, on conspiracy theory, what I find difficult is to find a single substantiated fact 
of the official conspiracy theory. That's my problem. Before you get into any hypotheses of what the alternative to the official conspiracy theory is, our first step is to say this is an official conspiracy theory and it's difficult to find a single substantiating fact for it. As we move on to consider those substantiating facts or lack of them, we might also uh, observe that projection uh, onto critics of uh, our current system that we have, uh, or not only critics but adversaries to it, that we have a long history of projection. And so of co one of the ways I long learned, uh, really, when the Reagan administration first came into power, I started observing, you know, the way to tell what they're planning next is what they're accusing other people of doing, whether it was germ warfare, biological warfare, new nuclear uh, systems, terrorism, and so forth, that in fact they were tipping their hand every time they blamed somebody else, the, the enemy of the day for something, that they were actually revealing what they were in fact up to themselves. This, this is a pattern of strategic, of a pattern I should say, of their strategy and their thinking that has gone on now for over a quarter of a century. And uh, the communist conspiracy to rule the world, for example, uh, well, it's interesting to look about that communist conspiracy to rule the world, which we heard ad nauseum as younger people, uh, has in fact <laughs> really been a conspiracy to rule the world indeed, but whose conspiracy has it been? Who is now ruling the world and how have they come to do so? So the fact that we get projected onto as conspiracy theory is just another repetition of an ancient operation which is predictable on the part of this uh, of this uh, regime the once we get by that it, the official theory uh, theory of 9/11 is itself a conspiracy theory that it uh, follows uh, a standard operation of projection onto critics and others of what it's doing itself, we now consider the official conspiracy itself. And what I find remarkable when you think about it is rather than thinking that uh, the, you know, what, you know, what account you would give for 9-11, just deal with what is being said about 9-11 and can you think of a single fact that's being uh, produced about 9-11, the official conspiracy theory, that's substantiatable. So the nature of the attack um, is, um, in the official conspiracy theory, is not only unsubstantiated but clearly false. The fact that, uh, the planes, that, that these planes flew around altogether 75 minutes without any intervention, which is standardly under five minutes, I mean, this indicates that not only is not a surprise attack, but there seems to have been a deliberate set down uh, of uh, defenses to allow it to happen at the very least. And then we look to the next thing, not only the nature of the attack, that it's not a surprise attack and there's no substantiation for it, but rather the opposite, but also the nature of the criminal agents who are involved in this atrocity. And the, uh, you know, the first thing is, well, Bin Laden, Bin Laden is behind it, uh, and that's been produced again and again as the author of the 9-11 tragedy and atrocity. Well, Bin Laden himself has never acknowledged it in uh, documents that are, can be validated. And indeed, when uh, the FBI was asked by some uh, person in the 9-11 truth movement who actually did, there's so many good bold people out there, said, well, uh, what, why hasn't Bin Laden, Bin Laden been charged with the 9-11 atrocity? And the FBI replied formally and in writing that they had no evidence that he was behind 9-11. So then we go to, well, there was the 19 Arab hijackers. Well, are they really, I mean, do we have substantiated evidence for them being behind the collapse of those buildings and the murder of over 2,700 people? Well, we don't really, especially when they only had box cutters and especially when the BBC television has documented that seven or six or seven of them are still alive and well elsewhere. So we don't have any, uh, on this official conspiracy theory, we don't really have any evidence substantiating the criminals behind the, the attack according to the official theory. Well, maybe the one that has struck me most from the beginning is the primary legal and forensic question that is posed of any major crime, especially a murderous crime, is uh, who benefits, or as in the legal terminology, Latin terminology, qui bono. In whose interest is it to have this uh, crime occur?
Well, who did benefit from 9-11? It's not very difficult, although the question has not been posed and there's been no official investigation or even immediate investigation or even raising of the question. The thing that w surprised me at the time, and I with others said, I think this is a setup <laughs> uh, when it was happening, was that the Bush administration was in such terrible problems. It was in a, a crisis that it was unprecedented in American history. First of all, the Bush administration had stolen the election. This is now documented.